All right, guys, we're a little under a month away. Yeah, I mean, what's happening? Like, this has gone so quickly. We're talking mid to late round draft sleepers. Guys who I think could come in day one and at least challenge for playing time. Let's go. So the criteria for this list, I watched about three games, filled up the sheet, uh, these were a few guys that I was familiar with throughout the year who I thought would be higher on, you know, draft media, NFL scouts boards, but whether it was because of injury, whether it was because of small school, whether it was because of testing, these guys are kind of being slotted in the later rounds, but that doesn't mean they can't play. So I kind of want to keep this short. This is a one-stop shop. But I want to get the information out because I think that even if you're not a fan of the Cowboys, even if you're just a fan of the draft and you want to know more information about these guys, I think that these five players have a chance to have nothing else compete for playing time day one. Let's get through this list, man, because I think that this is a really, really good list. Like I said, watch three games of each player because I really want to look at the nuance within each player's game. And I got to admit, these are some late round gems that I think that are going to help an NFL team right away. Number one, Purdue running back, Iowa transfer, Tyrone Tracy. To me, this guy, after he went to the combine around a 4 4 8 40, his agility numbers were in the 96th percentile. He was on everybody's radar. But I still think because the running back class stretches semi deep when the run will happen, I still think that he's kind of like a mid round gem. I watched the V Tech game. You know, he had to play in that Virginia Tech game. Outside zone, he steps, sticks his foot in the dirt. Like, a one-year running back shouldn't be doing those types of things. Vision is good. He runs a little high, but you get that because, hey, he just started playing running back. I mean, he was at Iowa. He was like a true receiver. Transfers, goes to Purdue, has really good production. I watched the, the Wisconsin game, and one of the things that I liked was their down versus Wisconsin. He's still running hard. He's still battling. He's still – but believe it or not, for him to be a receiver – like, and come from that pedigree, he actually runs harder than you would think. So this guy is a gem. I think that he can help a team as a third-round back right away. But then maybe, maybe you know, kind of work himself into that Rashad Wright role, like how, how he was able to do in Tampa. So I like this player. Tyrone Tracy definitely is a mid-round gem for me. Number two, Dylan Lobby. Um, anytime you have almost 300 yards receiving in the game, I don't care what the level of competition is. And, you know, he went to New Hampshire. So the level of competition was very low. It was kind of rough actually watching his film because, you know, his team was bad. Like, you couldn't even get a good gauge on how he really could hit the hole because they're missing blocks. They're not getting to their blocks. They're not getting second level. Like, even on that level, I was like, oh, my God, it's hard to watch. But he has a feel for routes. This is a true route running running back. But he also does give you a little bit as a runner. When you watch him at the scene, you're like, okay. He fits now. The one issue is he's slow. Four, five, three. You know, if he's faster, you're talking about him is maybe like a third, fourth round back. To me, I have an undrafted six round grade on him, but that doesn't mean that he can't come in and help a team. Let's say there's an injury. He's going to be a guy who does everything right. Like he's going to be where he's supposed to be. He's going to know the scheme. So I think that he's worth giving a shot. Like I said, six round, undrafted, seven round. I, but I think that he can play, and I think that he will stick onto a roster in the NFL. When you talk about the big three of Washington, you talk about Roma Dunze, Jalen Polk, and Jalen McMillan. Jalen McMillan is often forgotten about, and I kind of get it. I kind of don't. In 2022, there was no way you could forget about him because he had 1,000 yards, nine touchdowns, route runner, 6'1", 200-plus pounds. Like, what are we forgetting about? He had a better short shuttle than Roma Dunze. But – the injury in 2023, the production wasn't there. This receiver class is so deep, and here you go. I'm going to just say this about Jalen McMillan. If you're getting 2022 Jalen McMillan, you're getting a second-round player who can come in, work in a slot, work on the edge, is fast enough to work on the edge, fast enough to work in the middle of the field. I mean, excuse me, a good enough route runner to work in the middle of the field. He understands grass. He understands the post game, the skinny post game. He understands area on the, areas on the field. Um, really good hands, a sneaky route runner. Like, I'm talking myself into a first-round, second-round grade, but just the injury history. 
But there's a guy that's going to compete. He's going to give you all he's got. He, he works around that building like nobody else in that building. I just think this was a bad class for him to have a bad year. So Jalen McMillan, if you can get him in the fourth round, still, by far still. I actually love the fifth for him in Dallas because – I don't I think that he's an interchangeable receiver. He doesn't, he's not so matter of fact, he's not so one or the other. So I definitely think that he will be a steal for the Cowboys. If any team is looking at a receiver and you don't get that first wave or even that second wave and you're looking for a guy, Jalen McMillan will come in and, and really challenge whoever is on your roster. Number four, Zach Zenter. To me, I pre-injury had him graded higher than guys like. Cooper BB, I had him graded higher than guys like Christian Haynes. I mean, Zach Zinner to me in that Michigan O line, outstanding. Like everybody, everybody on that Michigan team to me, the way that they were coached, the way that they played, the way that they finished blocks. Had he not gone down in that Ohio State game, it was outstanding. I mean, you watch. There was a play when he's playing Michigan, and you're watching Blake Corm just stay right behind him on a GT counter. He pulls, he gets next level. Now it's a little lumbering, but, I mean, he finishes blocks. He gets, you know, you'll see these D tackles that are trying to block the structure with him, and he just sits. He's a refrigerator. He just sits right there, anchors down, and it's beautiful. Zach Zinner coming off the injury, I think, is going to be a lot like Andrew Voorhees was coming out of USC. Just a steal. And you're, you, Baltimore is going to play Andrew Voorhees this year. He's in their plans. I just think that if you can get a guy like this, Sixth round, if you don't address guard early, you get wiped, and he's sitting on the board staring at you, even if it's kind of a red shirt, get well soon season. I just think the value is too good. I love Zach Zinner's game. And Moore, the new head coach at Michigan, said that he did snap his freshman year in camp. Like, he does have that center flex. So he's somebody to think about in the later rounds, obviously because of the injury. Last but not least, Blake Watson. Running back, Memphis, it's so crazy. Antonio Gibson, Tony Pollard, Blake Watson, all these guys play in like <laughs> they literally move alike. Good vision, sneaky power, receiver background. He actually transferred him from Old Dominion, so I watched this game against Virginia Tech. Then I went and watched Old Dominion's I – mean, excuse me, I watched Old Dominion against Virginia Tech. Then I watched him against UAB and Navy when he was at Memphis. The Navy game was actually really physical. Well, those guys play good football, that Navy defense. They actually have a draftable safety at Navy. Watson is good. Vision, physical, not the biggest guy. Went to the East-West Shrine game. Uh, kind of outperformed Co Cody Schrader. Like, Watson can play and catch the football. Got a six to undrafted grade on him. I think that he might be an upgrade over Deuce Vaughn because Deuce is – just think the, the do story is he's just too small. I mean, you want to give him a shot, but he's just too little. I think that Watson can give you something as a pass protector. Like, to play running back in the NFL, if you can't even throw your body around and be a threat in pass pro, coaches just aren't going to put you out there. So I do like Watson. I think that he has more patience than people think, and he's faster from, like, 20 to 20. Now, he's not going to run away from me, not Jalen Wright, but he's faster 20 to 20. I really like his film, guys. You guys go watch him for yourself and let me know what you think. Like I said, I always know when we get to this show, when we get to the draft sleepers, that we're getting really, really close to the draft. I got my defensive sleepers coming up next. Then I got a bunch of shorts, obviously mock draft Mondays. I'm taking it up. Okay, we're going up three videos a week for you guys, getting ready for the draft. I want to make sure that I have every as many prospects as I can covered. We did a mock draft. With double move, we did talks with Vach last week, so that was two videos. But I want to take it up and make sure that I'm giving you guys as much content as possible. It's your boy Foots as always. Thank you guys for liking, sharing, and subscribing. Peace.